It's now day 635 of the Mazda 626 restoration project. I now have 800 subscribers. Do you know what it's like to have 800 people looking at you and you can't see them? It's kind of creepy. Stop creeping me out. Today we will be replacing the license plate trim piece from a 93 to 95 with a trim piece from a 96 to 97. The difference being the 96 to 97 had this chrome bezel and I think that looks a little bit nicer and that will go along with a lot of my new chrome interior pieces. That should provide for a, a little bit better look in my opinion. I like the chrome. There's some people out there that don't like the chrome. So what you could do if you have a 96, 97 and you don't want this chrome piece, you could swap it with a 93 to 95 and it completely deletes this because if you take off this chrome piece here there are holes and you would have to then bondo and sand and fill that so an easy replacement for that is just find a 93 to 95 and yes all of them from 93 to 97 will mix and match you can swap a 93 to 95 with the 96 97 and vice versa so that's what we will be doing today but one problem that I ran into is that my seal uh, from the junkyard part has since vastly deteriorated. Probably going to attempt to take a heat gun to this and make this malleable again. That is just way off. Look how off that is. <laughs> so that's the project for today is the license plate trim swap. So one of the first things I'm going to do is obviously open the trunk or as some of you in other parts of the world might call it, a boot. And this is on the saloon version if you're in the UK. The sedan is known as a saloon and that's the boot. And that's the bonnet. I can dig. Same with you Australian guys. There are 626s all over the world and people watch my 626 videos from all over the world. So you're fellow 626 owners, so I, I do. I have a lot of love for your 626s just as much as mine. But one thing you'll notice as soon as we come in here is that my trim, is that my molding, I can, I can see that that has pulled away on mine as well. So I'm guessing that is a, that's a constant issue. I think the, the rear lights here, that, that could be shined up a little bit. I might actually end up taking these off and cleaning them. That looks pretty messed up. In order to get the license plate trim panel removed, you first have to remove your headlights. Both headlights are put on after the trim. So the trim goes on first and then the headlights go on on top of that. And you cannot remove the trim without breaking it. You can remove it, but you can't do it without breaking it without removing your tail lights first. So we need to go ahead and remove the tail lights first. And we'll get these two, and then there's a couple of nuts and fasteners up here. If you were to undo any bolt on a Mazda 626, pretty good chance it's going to be a 10 millimeter. This is basically just a cap on a stud that's sticking through. Pretty easy stuff. Kind of rusty. Okay, so here's your license plate, and currently it's residing like so. And as you can see, there's going to be one, two, three, four screws that you're going to have to remove. Aha, there's the first screw up in there. You get that one, and then your second one is going to be up in that hole. So that's basically what you do. You just get those four. It was so rusted inside that it got stuck and I ended up having to shear it off, which is fine because we're going to be replacing shit. That was to the uh, taillight assembly. Son of a bitch. Well, it's not that loose, so I'm okay with that. Nothing I can do. Okay, moving on. Now to get all the stuff inside, it's probably still going to be 10 millimeter. As you can see with the taillight assembly out, this whole entire side is now loose and almost free to come out. So all we have to do is do the same to the other side. All right, here's the bolt that sheared off two so you have five bolts total two on the side and then one two three around the middle now these you will need a deep well socket so what I've done is just got my 10 millimeter deep well socket and you can just crack those by hand they are hand tight thankfully these three are actually easier than those two because they're just hand tight so actually I could probably show you those all right I'll do this one over here so get that and 
I mean, these things are barely even on there. So, that, and then you can just spin these off by hand. Blink. And then just do the same to the other two. All right, now we've got the two studs in here and the three studs up there, so this one should be ready to come out. And what you do is just push on the actual stud. <clears throat> Kind of hard to do. I got that side out, that side, everything's kind of loose in there. Oh, you want to disconnect your electrical connector. And there's a taillight housing. For the license plate trim piece, the only thing you have to do is remove that. The one screw on the outside and four screws up inside and then one screw actually on the license plate itself. And then the entire thing will lift right off with no broken parts. And I'll just detail what, um, what Andy and I were doing wrong in the junkyard that was breaking these. Okay, so this is basically how your tail light lines up looking at it from the back. And as you can see, there's a black peg here. And that black peg will fit through like that. If you get all your bolts undone and you attempt to remove the license plate trim, Without removing your tail lights first, you will break that peg. And that's not really going to hurt you in your overall fitment because, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five screws, five studs holding in this tail light. So don't feel too bad if you break this prong. It's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but it's nice to keep everything to exact fitment if you possibly can. You can see the junkyard replacement has a big arrow that goes up. This side points up. I have no idea why they started doing that. It's obviously different from a 95. Oh, and make sure not to lose these studs because these will slide off. And one of the issues that Andy and I were having at the junkyard was trying to figure out how to uh, to remove these from the, the car. And basically you don't have to. You can leave these in place. You don't have to worry about these at all. Okay, I'm going to attempt now to heat this up. I've cleaned it. I've cleaned the entire piece as well as uh, clean under here. This black stuff that's under here is actually part of uh, an adhesive layer. So I can't really clean that off too much and I'm not worried about it. It's not dirt. So I'm going to go over this really lightly and hopefully be able to uh, make it malleable to the point where I can bend this back into shape. I really don't want the seal itself to lose its shape, so I'm gonna go slow. And that's pretty freaking hot. Okay, I can kind of feel it start to loosen up here. All right, I'll just keep working at this until I can get it straight enough and I'm happy with it to uh, clamp it. That way when it cools down and it's clamped, uh, hopefully it will reform and keep that shape a little bit better. I think I'm making progress, so we'll see how this goes. I decided against going with window weld. Instead, I'm gonna go with Permatex Black. And any excess, Cut it off with a razor. It's not working out so hot. Go for something like that. All right, the RTV has been curing for a couple hours and it's solidified and stayed in place. I had it clamped to two different locations and then I just ran another bead along to a seal because it was kind of popped up a little bit. So just ran a seal in there doesn't look that great, but you're not really going to notice it once um, 
everything's put together hopefully so that's where i stand right now anyway and i'll probably end up picking this up tomorrow this has been drying overnight uh it is now the next day so we're going to go ahead and take these off we'll see how that fared i am i'm pretty happy with that it is actually providing a good seal there although it doesn't look like it because of the camera zooms in so fine there's there's no air gap in there that's just excess here and here but that is really nicely sealed together um i'm really liking how that came together i am very happy with that it follows the lines really clean so that is a very good job we're now ready to reinstall this in the car and this basically just drops right in You have to make sure that all these holes line up. And it is a very precise drop in. There's not a lot of room for error there. And this stud sheared off, so I'm not going to have that. And the stud is built into the, the housing. Uh, there's no way to repair that. It's the same exact concept as the fog lights. If this stud breaks off on the fog lights, you're screwed. Same thing. These studs are built into the housing, and I hate seeing that because if a stud breaks because it's rusty, as you can see, basically wind, rain, water, you name it, will come right down in this gully uh, or channel and has a tendency to hit these two outside screws as well as that one for that and uh, they will rust and they will break so be careful it will actually be a good idea to clean those threads but I'm gonna add a healthy dose of anti-seize to that once it comes time to reinstall and you have to make sure that your peg or the prong goes back inside of that hole that looks good that fitment looks good there are three and those go on there really easy you can spin those right on and all you have to do is hand tighten these you don't even need a wrench or a ratchet and just do that for the other two uh, so that one is screwed and I can find another one of these in a junkyard no problem take me two seconds to find one of those in a junkyard but these are basically just plastic caps uh, with a, uh, a metal coiled insert As you can see that one's broken there so you have to be real gentle with these have some anti-seize on there. When you have a rusty thread that you need to use anti-seize with, just go real slow and go in a back and forth motion. That way you kind of work some of that rust off. You're basically working the threads here. See, that's a tough one right there. All right, and then just get it hand tight to where you can tighten it with your hand and you can't tighten it anymore. And do not use a wrench or a ratchet on it. These are plastic, remember. If you over tighten these years down the road, these will split and break and um, then you invite rust issues. So um, just use hand tight. Treat these just like you would your fog light studs. These studs are very susceptible to breaking, shearing off, they are thin, cheap metal studs. They're not good metal. I think that I think that's tight enough where I don't even really need to worry about this missing stud. Uh, there's not going to be any rattling coming from here, uh, unless it's for my stereo system, which is fairly meager. And that is a rejuvenated tail with a nice shiny coat of plastics. Looking good. I like that. I like the chrome. So uh, so that project is done. Basically, the only thing left. Oh yeah. <laughs> Make sure you don't forget to reconnect your electrical connectors. Shit. Ah, what now? It's not closing. <laughs> uh oh. Oops. Yeah, you're not going to be able to close your trunk on a... Uh, on an impact side. Check for loose screws, all that stuff. We're good. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. No. 
I think everything's fitting up. Oh. This side seems to be hanging out a little bit. I think that's more an issue with my trunk fitment. I think my trunk needs to be readjusted. I mean, look at that gap there. It's way too big. It's like this section here needs to be pushed up a little bit further into this corner. This whole section, this whole trunk needs to be pushed back. Well, it's either that or this body panel does not fit because this body panel here has been damaged and has been replaced. Maybe I just never cared enough about fitment that I never noticed that. I don't think the trunk is adjustable. The hood or the bonnet is slightly adjustable. The trunk or the boot, uh, I didn't see a way to adjust it. But I'll look in the manuals and I'll see what I can figure out. And if it's adjustable, then I'll go back and I'll... Uh, shore up that fitment but for now I'm pretty happy with that I have my 96 97 license plate trim on my 95 and I think that's gonna look really good obviously it looks like shit because it's not painted uh, I really need a paint job real bad here's a great example of that here's the original paint here's paint number two and then down here below this level no that's not a shadow that's actually the paint all that is paint number three and then that continues. Obviously, you can see the difference in the door. The door forward is paint number three. So I'm hoping to get paint number four. Along the way, maybe this time, my entire car will have the same color. So anyway, it looks great even with the shitty paint. It's going to look amazing with new paint. And I have no idea how long it's going to be until I get new paint. I don't really have the money for that kind of thing right now. So someday, somehow, some way in the future, maybe. That's all there is to removing your tail lights and your license plate body panel or otherwise known as your license plate trim piece. If you have any questions about any of that process or this video, feel free to ask me a question. If you're going to ask me a question, ask me a question about the video in the same video topic that I cover. Uh, don't ask me a question about my struts if you're watching a video about replacing the tail lights or don't ask me about doing engine work in a video where I'm working on the e-brake handle or something like that you know try and make your questions related to the video because that will help others when they're searching for stuff and they can see dialogue or commentary along the same subject matter I think that helps um, so feel free to discuss and if you like this click like subscribe blah 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 cool